Hello, good afternoon to the folks, uh, most of the folks in uh, North America and the Western Hemisphere. Good evening to my uh, friends in Europe and good morning to my friends in the Pacific Rim. Once again, welcome and thank you for joining me here on The Angry Astronaut. So today, uh, unsurprisingly, I am exceedingly angry and uh, for you know reasons that really should come as a shock to nobody because once again, we have a delay delay from the FAA. Real quick before I move on, um, I want to express my deepest apologies for those of you who showed up a lot earlier today. Um, late at night, I sent a notification to my partner in crime out in uh, out in uh, Yorkshire and gave him um, his time instead of my time. Essentially, I gave him the wrong time, UK time, to start things. So he started hours um, before uh, I, I was thinking of starting, so I created some issues. Anyway, but yeah, the FAA, once again, in case in case all of you haven't heard, have delayed Starship once again, um, all the way to the end of the month. So, you know, here we go again. You know, what what's going on with the FAA? Well, this doesn't come as an immense surprise to me because, frankly, I don't think that the FAA is the problem. I don't think that the FAA is the one that's really putting up any roadblocks. Instead, what I am thinking about or what is likely to be happening is the whole issue with the other governmental departments that they're having to negotiate with. That is the issue, is they have lots of other governmental agencies that are involved that probably want more of a research. Low-key, I feel like the FAA is delaying it on purpose to let SLS fly first, or either someone, Jeff Bozo, is bribing them to delaying it, or it could be other reasons. Yeah, I I would say the FAA's main problem, because remember, when they, when they put you know, their, uh, this whole report out in the first place and put it out for public comment, they made it clear that they wanted SpaceX to proceed, that it was their recommendation to proceed with all of the conditions that were laid out in that report. And so really, unless the FAA was just lying at that time, seems to me that this is something that they want to go for. But the problem is you don't just have the FAA involved here. They're there are a lot of other issues. Yes, that is a good point, Mark. Um, Starship is not really ready to go either. I mean, these, these are some things that actually confuse me a little bit about the current program, concern me a bit. I mean, we did lots and lots of test launches, lots of, of 10 kilometer hops with, you know, the earlier versions, these prototypes that were running off of Raptor 1. And Raptor 1 is now not even an engine that's going to be used. So we have yet to flight test, or SpaceX has yet to flight test Raptor 2. We haven't actually seen Raptor 2 in flight. And Raptor 2 very likely will not fly until there's an actual orbital shot. FAA delays, Blue Origin gets another shot. Um, why does it seem like the government likes how Bezos spends his money? I'll tell you, in some ways, I think the government just finds Bezos to be a huge pain um, because the, he has the money um, to indefinitely tie up the government in court. He can tie, you know, tie up uh, government lawyers. He can keep an entire team of lawyers on retainer for ever. And this is something that could go on for quite some time. A uh, comment was just made, think it's a deal with Musk. Perhaps it is. By the way, we also have um, some comments coming from my Discord supporters. If you want to uh, to be part of Discord, and by the way, I have a Discord-specific conversation coming up. Um, it should be tomorrow. I'll be announcing that soon, and that will be just for my Discord supporters. If you want to be a Discord supporter, go to the Patreon in the description and become a member that way, or you can uh, hit that Join button. Johnny Spacer, thank you so much. FAA may as well get everything out of the way now instead of doing it piecemeal, yeah? Or at least approve it or don't approve it. And you know, this is why it's not just another 30 days. This is why this, this is not just something that's going to delay SpaceX for a little while. Because what happens if at the end of all of these delays, the FAA says no? 
or the FAA says that an in-depth environmental study, which is probably going to take at least a year, is, you know, is going to happen. You know, what happens if that becomes a requirement? Then Elon is going to, he's already stated it, he's going to be moving his operations at least for orbital launches out to Kennedy Space Center. And it would be nice for him to know that. It would be nice for SpaceX to know that as early as possible. And that is a, a big thing. Uh, Darth says, if the FAA was the one thing holding up uh, SpaceX, ask yourself if you believe Elon and everyone else would be quiet about it. What he has said is that the material and the survey will be done at about the same time. That's not an accident. SpaceX and the FAA talk. And it's uh, not obvious that SpaceX has a stack ready. That's true. Very true. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think it's Bob Sue or uh, I'm anyway, thank you very much for the support. U.S. government should take access against Jeff Bozo for del delaying such a big government project and eating up taxpayer money. No man should have such power. You're right. The guy, as I, as I said in one of my most recent videos, he has more money than any human being has any right to have. But the problem is, is how he spends it. Um, he spends it to get his way, to get his contracts approved any way that he can. And he's willing to sacrifice Artemis for doing it. I mean, there was just far too much of a delay that we've had already. Brent says, when evaluating Starship progress, do we focus too much on flashy tests and not enough on things like new engine designs, production capacity, infrastructure development, behind the scenes tests. That's true. That's very true. Um, you know, and it's in our nature, I suppose, to judge too much on the tests that are made, you know, out in the open. And once again, we need to remember, guys, that SpaceX is virtually the only outfit that does things this way. Sierra Space and their security was intense. The footage that was taken of Dream Chaser on the factory floor and also of a Shooting Star, that still has not been approved. It's been over a week since I was there, and they are still going going through it to make sure that no proprietary technical information gets out. Um, so, I mean, it's, I'm going to get it eventually. That's what I've been told. You know, they're, they're certainly working on making it happen. It's in their interest so that I can, you know, put out another video, continue to promote Sierra Space. But at the same time, um, you know, most companies, their security is really tight. And so there's a lot happening behind the scenes. Well, SpaceX did jump the gun by building and testing Testing Starship without updated environmental impact studies. It's a good point, Johnny. That is a good point. I mean, we really, you know, all of the work that's been done on Starship and the intent of sending, once again, the most powerful rocket in human history up to orbit from an area that has not yet been approved by governmental agencies may indeed have been jumping the gun a little bit. We really don't know. And many of my uh, of my colleagues, my YouTube creator colleagues, have moved out to Boca Chica in anticipation of all of these things happening. And it's entirely possible that this isn't going to happen at all. It's possible that the government is simply going to say that there's entirely too many vulnerable um, environmental properties in the immediate vicinity of the launch pad, and they're just not going to be happy about that. Uh, there's a comment, it's not the FAA, they're just a tool, it's the government in general, or more specifically certain incumbent politicians who do not like the disturbance caused by SpaceX. Maybe so. I'll tell you something, though, our government really depends on SpaceX. Man, we need them in the worst kind of way. Getting back to my Discord commenters, um, I like the idea of having the Kuiper satellites on the Vulcan. Yeah, I, I'm glad you like that. Uh, why wasn't my idea, by the way? Um, but this would be a way to put some additional pressure on Jeff Bezos to get those engines developed. However, interestingly enough, the day that I released that video was just by coincidence the day that Tori Bruno was giving us estimated dates as to the delivery time of of the BE-4s, the estimated time of launch, that sort of thing. So it's looking very, very positive. It's looking very, very, um, you know, very promising that uh, that Vulcan Centaur may indeed get off the ground. Uh, Tori says that he's very satisfied with the performance that he's seen of the BE-4 on the test stand. So maybe, 
maybe we're looking for Vulcan Centaur and therefore the Peregrine Lander setting down on the moon this year. Um, it's starting to look more and more likely all the time. Because keep in mind, the first flight of Vulcan Centaur is not just some little orbital test. This is a real damn mission that's going on here, a mission to the moon. Um, well, Starship was going to launch from the Cape anyways. Uh, best bet was to move to Florida close to the Cape. Uh, rockets launched there regardless of Starship. Uh, yeah. And, of course, the one drawback to it, of course, is how busy the Cape often is. Uh, Darth, okay, there's another statement. The FAA's website really hints that it's the EPA uh, holding up the assessment, not the FAA. Thank you, Lord Michael. And, by the way, that information is posted on the live stream Q&A portion of uh, Discord. Thank you so much for putting that up there. I like the idea of the Dianetics HLS lander. Um, is Dream Chaser better than the Space Shuttle? Well, well, uh, I too. Oh, quite. Thank you, Chris, for the ten quid. EM built Star Base because the FAA were originally supportive. But I have said that all along. The final decision was going to be a big no. Hope I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Yeah, it could be, Chris. I'd, I'd say right now I'm giving it a 50-50 shot. Uh, Josh, thank you so much. I'll tell you, this support, it means everything to me right now. The trip that I just took was only made possible by these sorts of things. And guess what? We got more coming up. We got SLS taking to the skies, hopefully um, within the next couple of months. I definitely intend to be there for that. Josh, thank you. Can Dream Chaser, in theory, be launched off a of Falcon 9 or a Falcon Heavy? Josh, the answer to that question is a qualified yes. And for more details, be ready for my chapter two, my part two of my Sierra space tour. And I will give you the solid answer on that. But the question is, yes, the uh, Dream Chaser can be launched off of Falcon 9 under certain circumstances. And I'll spe spell all of that out in the second uh, part of that episode. Um, coming soon, coming soon. Um, thank you so much, uh, uh, Kite Caden. Thermodynamic vent uh, system spray bar concept test program by Rockwell and NASA could be the solution for Starship in-flight refilling and boil-off prevention. Very interesting. I'm going to look into that. Uh, that that looks very intriguing indeed. You know, boil-off is a huge problem with it storing fuel in space no matter what. Um, so, yeah, that's something that needs to be rectified, and hopefully uh, it will be. Oh, also, Kawhi, to answer the question, um, yes, I do believe that Dream Chaser is safer than the space shuttle. Is it better than the space shuttle? Well, it's less expensive, obviously, uh, but it could carry up a lot more cargo, that sort of thing. But in the final analysis, I would say it's safer, therefore better. Um, oh, it's, uh, why didn't Elon make sure he had built Starbase in a place where the authorities would get more support? You know, I ask myself that question all the time. Um, you know, oftentimes when I look at the map where Starbase and especially the launch pad is located, it is surrounded by a protected wildlife refuge. There are other places that aren't so protected. Why there? Well, there's obviously a lot of workforce there. There's a lot of infrastructure built in around the Port Isabel area. So there's a lot there to help build a star base. But yeah, that is a big drawback. Plus a, a public beach that people don't like. Oh, Kaskin, thank you so much for subscribing. Thanks for becoming a new angry advocate. Congressional interests uh, will be hard to keep wasting money on SLS if it is not launched before every Starship. Yeah. Um, and that's just it. I mean, SLS and Starship right now are working in concert and it's going to be a very expensive solution. One that ultimately needs to be replaced. SLS is entirely too expensive and the government simply isn't willing to spend enough money on it anyway. If they were willing to spend the kind of money that we were spending back in the 1960s, then we could launch multiple SLSs every year, but we're not trying to do that. Um, the FAA is trying to destroy America's space activities. The FAA needs to be defunded now. 
Maybe so, Jonathan. I'll tell you, there there probably are elements of the FAA that are, you know, get destroying our space program in the middle of a lot of bureaucratic red tape. An argument could be made for that. Um, okay, the EPA tends to be slow when it comes to environmental studies. Yes, Starliner glitch. Uh, once again, these are Discord comments. Um, but yeah, the EPA, if they get involved in this more than the FAA was anticipating, it will be a year at least before this gets approved. Um, I think Tartan, Texas, is I think the activity around SLS, Starship, and Vulcan is going to be creating such a buzz around the Cape. It will spur on BO and all that can benefit. I can imagine it being like uh, Silicon Valley type energy. Maybe so. I certainly hope so. That would be a great thing. Um, here's, in my opinion, if Blue Origin had competent leadership and was fully committed to doing their projects, where would they be at? A lot further than they are right now. It's as simple as that. Blue Origin has an insane amount of financial backing. The financial backing that that company has is out of control. And it is my hope, it is my strong belief that the partnership between Sierra Space, the legal partnership between the two of them is going to drive Blue Origin to better accomplishments because Sierra Space is going to drive them. Caden, thank you again for the support. There's a whole NASA document about the program. Found it yesterday. It's very interesting. Read. Thank you for dropping a link in the Discord. Really do appreciate that. I will I will have a read there. Um, Starliner Glitch, why go, why not? Why go to the UK and not Colorado? Um, because the UK has an exploding private space industry that nobody is covering, number one. And number two, I'm in love with the country. It's as simple as that. Bruin Fly, thank you so much for your support. Wow. Um, you guys are crazy generous today. And uh, once again, uh, thank you so much because everything that you see in terms, I mean, I was just in Las Vegas for the CES convention and everything that came out of that. Then Sierra Space, you know, and I got some ULA stuff while I was out there. All sorts of amazing. Oh, here's Rocky, by the way. Rocky the Rocket from ULA um, has taken the journey from Colorado uh, out here to where I live. So that's a nice thing. I too think. Think NASA wants SLS to launch first. Um, Starship will surpass and dominate. I like both designs, but SpaceX seems to be the better system. Um, yeah, it is the better system simply because it's more efficient and less expensive. It certainly is the better design. The one advantage that SLS has, of course, is the fact that it can toss a substantial amount of payload all the way out to cislunar space without any orbital refueling without the logistical complications of that. So that is one advantage that SLS has. Who needs enemies when you have the federal government to destroy us? <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'll definitely keep uh, keep it coming. Yeah. And uh, the federal government, of course, has been in, an obstruction and a roadblock to lots of very innovative work in the history of this country. And I, I think this is no exception. Um, Anton says, I, I was trying to donate Okay, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Starliner Glitch says, Sierra has the motivation, BO has the money. Sounds like it can work. Yes, that is indeed why I think it will work. Michael, um, my biggest pet peeve is that the FAA has not reported any updates from the four of the environmental agencies in four months. That shows negligence, accidental, or blatant. Yeah, Michael. Um, or perhaps they're just afraid to show where the negotiations are going right now because it will generate lots of outrage. Maybe they don't want people to get outraged until until, uh, you know, things truly go south. Blue Origin is currently trying to grow very aggressively. Well, that's true. Um, they're offering top dollar for people to go over to them and other aerospace companies right now. Got a very generous offer yourself. Well, did you? Well, um, I hope whatever you decide to do uh, is, is the right decision for you. And if you head over to uh, Blue Origin, please stay in touch with me. I'd like to find out more about what's going on there. I have heard good things you know, in terms of what their future plans are. The problem is I haven't seen much in the way of tangible results. Excuse me, given what's at their disposal. Um, 
So in any event, oh, uh, Discord, just to make be one real one quick thing, you can access Discord through YouTube if you want to. Just hit that little join button and you have access to Discord as well. Um, there's a link uh, in there for all my angry advocates off of there. So there's two ways that you can become a Discord supporter. Um, another way, by the way, just DM me if you want to use something else. D- DM me on uh, uh, on Twitter. And I will, if you want to, you know, set up some other arrangement and I will make you part of Discord in, you know, in a manual fashion, you know, any way you want to support the channel and I'll be happy to, to help you any way I can. Um, let's see here. Um, uh, Reiki Master says SpaceX can launch 12 Falcon 9s. Uh, it has in Falcon Heavy's right from Starbase. He should set up Falcon 9 launches from Starbase. Yes, uh, with one web and others who need their help. Yeah. I said that um, a while ago, actually, that Falcon 9 should start launching uh, as soon as possible. Uh, Landro, what if, S- if SLS blows up on the first launch, Artemis is going to be in incredible trouble. Um, you know, Boeing and NASA cannot take the sorts of chances that SpaceX does in the way they do their testing. Um, if they blow this rocket up, it's, there's a very good chance that Artemis is finished. Um and it's a grim situation when you have those kinds of mistakes, you know, that there's that much that could happen, that many consequences, but indeed uh, it could. Oh, Anton, thank you for the reminder. Uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already done so. Anybody who views this channel, please like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Um, you know, there are many ways that this channel can grow. And, uh, you know, I'm on trying, still trying to get to 90,000, getting ready to blow this mug up, the Boeing mug, um, along with the Blue Origin mug. Um, oh, thank you so much. Uh, more support coming in from Mars Embassy. And once again, don't forget, Mars Embassy also is a YouTube creator right in Boca Chica. Lots of excellent footage of Starship development. So keep that in mind, uh, indeed. Um, let's see, what else do we have here going on? Oh, so yeah, but that, that is a good point about the Falcon 9s. We should be launching those. Um, that There's approval for it right now. Falcon Heavies. Um, bottom Feeder, thank you. Do I think SpaceX will always partner with NASA or eventually break away and do their own thing? Um, I think they're going to do both. I do think that they that they will do both ultimately as to when. I think the when is when Starlink begins producing the kind of revenue that they think is going to be is going to come from Starlink. I think that that's when they'll have the capital to really go it alone. NASA will approve Boca Chica. That's why they just give SpaceX the award for the second Starship crewed lunar landing for sustained lunar operations. Good point, Jim. And maybe maybe that is indeed the truth. They pretty much had to anyway, given what they had just rolled out because the sustained landing contract is not available, not available to SpaceX. They cannot put a bid in on that. They had to have an additional launch from the original contract to demonstrate the sustainability of Starship as well. SpaceX will now have a bunch of Raptor 1 engines now available for the right price. It should upgrade uh, the Falcons for Raptor. Oh, that's an interesting idea. I never even thought of that. Do something with all those Raptor ones. I, w- I have to admit, I am a little confused as to why we went from Raptor one to Raptor two and never used it to really launch the anything into space. Where there are lots of serious problems with Raptor one, um, it is just not thing. Yes, Blue Origin's lead rocket engineer leaves um, now. Once again, I would emphasize that that particular departure was a routine. Um, retirements rather than anything particularly scary, but at the same time, anything negative or anything that can be perceived as negative that goes on with the BE4 right now can be, you know, set off alarm bells with people. That's something that we really need to take into account is that, you know, any news with the BE4 
that's something that should scare people, uh, especially somebody retiring at such a curious time right before the delivery of the flight certified engines. However, in all due fairness, this was a scheduled retirement um, scheduled for quite some time ago. So maybe the guy was just holding on as long as he could, hoping that he would actually get to, you know, actually see his his creation come to fruition while he was still at Blue Origin, but he just couldn't hang on any longer. That, that could be as well. Who knows? Um, but once again, we shouldn't be in this situation. We shouldn't be wondering when people depart as to what that means for the future of, you know, a, for, of a space flight company, of ULA, of the BE-4s. We shouldn't get scared about those sorts of things. But we do because Blue Origin promised to have the BE-4 ready to go by 2017. 2017. And look where we are now. Barely, if we are lucky, everything is going to get delivered for the BE-4 in time for one launch by the end of this year, maybe two. Not good. That's not good at all. And it doesn't speak well for a company that has virtually limitless financial resources. Um, Boeing has had such software problems, Max Airplane, Starship, possibly Artemis. Um, they probably have a China agent on the team. Boy, that would be scary if they did. Um, that would that would be paramount to an act of war, really, an, an action to intentionally sabotage our, our space program. Um, Starliner Glinch says if NASA wanted to accelerate Starship, they should get cracking on pad LC-49. Maybe Blue Origin should buy some Raptors for the New Glenn. Yes, we just got word recently, by the way, that New Glenn, there's no way that New Glenn is going to launch in 2022, 2023 at the earliest, and honestly, given the lack of progress that they've had recently, it could be as long out as 2024 before New Glenn gets launched. Um, uh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, a, uh, a contribution just came in um, from MathWiz. Thank you very much for your support. As an astrobiotic employee, hello, um, love astrobiotic, by the way. The whole BE4 saga has definitely been Interesting. Yes, I would say interesting is uh, is one good word to use for it. By the way, I love Astrobiotic. Great company you're working for. Um, I've done a couple of videos uh, on your projects. Um, so yeah, neat stuff. Um, but uh, yes, indeed, it has, has been interesting. Without reliable engines, we aren't going anywhere. That's true. And guess what? What's one of our, the most reliable engines that we have ever used in the history of our space program? The RD-180, the Russian RD-180 has been one of the most solid engines that we have ever used. And now, of course, we don't have them. Um, so, you know, of course, we never should have put in our put our trust in Russia anyway. But I have to admit, that's a damn good engine that they've got there. John uh, says if they have limitless resources, they should not have gotten federal funding. I agree with that completely. Absolutely. I agree with that. With the kind of money that Jeff has at his disposal, he should have come in with the same bid or maybe even a lower bid that even than Elon Musk did for the HLS program. Instead, he comes in after the fact and offers $2 billion worth of incentives. Why didn't you do it on the front end? Didn't you guess that maybe Elon was going to pull something like that? And if you wanted your project to succeed so badly, why didn't you invest some of your own money as well? Blue Origin lead rocket. Yes, that's that's correct. Uh, we just got a, a notification on that. That is uh, that is definitely um, driving some news. Just checking once again. Okay, yeah, Raptor ones for the new Glenn. Good idea. Definitely a good idea. The entire world right now is wish, wishing it was better at thinking ahead, given the current global economy issues. That's true. That's true. We really should have, have known. We should have known what was ultimately going to happen with Russia and Ukraine and Putin. Uh, the writing has been on the walls with that man's level of aggression for some time. Blue Origin will be seen dumpster diving for raptors. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Maybe they'll need them. Uh, we'll see how the BE-4 performs. I mean, technically, that engine is less complicated 
We got 410 people watching. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to this channel. It does help drive what we do. It helps drive my content. It helps drive this channel. This is how I make my living, plain and simple. Um, and the fact that I can, I feel so grateful and so blessed that I'm able to do that. So thank you so much for your support. Um, so yeah, I mean, when it comes to... Uh, Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I, I did lose a little weight, actually. Uh, the FAA is acting exactly as I thought they would under this administration. Yeah. Well, you know, government agencies uh, always tend to have these issues. So let's go ahead and um, already right, talked about this. Do I think SpaceX is going to Florida now? And will this affect news coverage? No, I don't think they're going to Florida yet. And once again, to, to kind of review what's hap what we've just been talking about for the last half hour, this is not just about a delay of another 30 days. This is about putting our entire return to the moon at risk. We have chosen Starship, regardless of what's happening, with future sustainable landers. Lunar Starship is our one choice for Artemis 3. There are no other companies that can, if you watch my interview with Dynetics, you will know this. There are no other companies that are going to be able to build a lunar lander in time. If Lunar Starship doesn't work out, 2027 is the earliest, the earliest that we are going to be landing on the moon again. So every delay that we have is a delay for Artemis. And also keeping everybody in a state of suspense, in a state of uncertainty, when we really don't know if we're going to have a, you know, a disaster that if we're, if we're going to have to move SpaceX's operations out to the Cape. Oh, thank you, Crafty Greek. Uh, really quick, initial cursory environmental assessment. I'm surprised we're not getting a hint at the major roadblock involved, at least. Thank you very much for the support. Yeah, you're right. It'd be nice to know. I mean, I suspect that's what's going on is environmental opposition from the Fish and Wildlife Department and such. But the fact that we don't know yet is what's going to create a long-term delay in Artemis. And Artemis is absolutely, absolutely vitally dependent on Lunar Starship. Without Lunar Starship, there is no Artemis 3. It's as simple as that, or there won't be an Artemis 3 until 2027, which is significantly after the Chinese are planning to land on the moon. So it's not just flushing things down that, you know, it's not just flushing SpaceX and their ambitions. It is our entire future. The future of our space program and our ambitions to go to the moon are being put at risk. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm James, thank you very much for making your comment that you did. Um, I do know that uh, I've been to the UK eight times. I do know that living there is not an easy thing. But once again, it is something that I am determined to do because there is a burgeoning space program happening there that seems to have the support of the government, by the way, that I'm very excited, excited about. While back here, the most important thing to the success of Artemis 3 is being put on hold yet again. And that is something that should get all of us angry. So until the FAA finally gets it in gear and whatever other governmental agencies are holding up this process, until they make their decision and tell SpaceX whether or not they can operate out of Boca Chica or they have to move everything to Florida. Because the longer this goes on, the worse it gets for Artemis. So until somebody in the government figures that out, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.